This video is sponsored by Revolution Race, and these pants have a secret. I'll get to these guys later. In this video, we're gonna stack up three options that you have for controlling aphids. We're gonna test them out, see which one does better on these plants. Let's get busy. If you're watching this video, you probably, like me, learned about aphids in grade school. Aphids, those tiny little creatures that come through and suck on the leaves and suck the juice out of leaves of a plant. And then they secrete this sweet liquid that oftentimes ants will like to come. And so the ants will be harvesting the liquid and tending to these aphids. But then you've got these ladybugs and the ladybugs swoop in and try to eat the aphids. And there ends up being this epic battle between the ladybugs and the ants all over these aphids. It truly is nothing worse for a gardener than coming out and seeing your beautiful plants that were doing so well all of a sudden just decimated by some sort of pest, in this case aphids. These three pumpkins had lush green leaves, they were growing, they were putting out a ton of growth, and they've gone from having those nice green, moist, supple leaves to having these yellow and brown messes because those aphids have literally sucked the lifeblood out of this plant. They attack the leaves, they attack the flower buds, and that's where we are today. So we're gonna get after these things. The three that I'm gonna test include a insecticidal soap, a horticultural oil, and a homemade version, which I'll describe in a second. I wanna talk really quickly about what the mechanism involved with each of these. Horticultural oil is especially effective when it comes to eggs. It covers the egg and smothers it because those eggs need to be able to breathe and so they die and that also can happen to the live bugs themselves. It can smother them and they die. And this is great when things are dormant and when those bugs are first coming on the scene, uh, but it should have some effectiveness here. Another alternative to this is neem oil, but neem oil packs a bit more punch. It's got some components in there that can sometimes cause a little bit of stress on a plant. So this is a more gentle option for your plant is this horticultural oil. Not the dormant oil, but the all season kind. It's a little more thin, can be sprayed on more easily. The next is this insecticidal soap. What this does is it gets sprayed on and those components in there go into the body of the bugs and it causes degradation of their tissues and they die. We want them to die and our plants to live. This is also a gentle option for your plants and a really good option as well. You want to spray this when you don't see pollinators right there because you don't want it to get on the pollinators. You want to spray this right on the bodies of the insects that you're trying to kill. And the third option is the homemade brew. <laughs> I don't actually think this is gonna be as effective as these, but it is simple. It's water, like a, a quart of water. Look at aphids climbing on here. Get off of there. It's a quart of water and it has two tablespoons of dish soap in here, and it also has a teaspoon of cayenne pepper shaken up, and this gets sprayed on. We're gonna see if this homemade method works as well. I'm not sure what the mechanism is here and why that would kill these, but we'll try it and just see. Before you spray, you may want to consider cutting off all these dead and dying leaves. You know, these aren't going to be contributing anything to your system anyway. They're dead and dying. They're going to introduce the possibility of death and decay into your whole system. And on top of that, you don't want to spray something you're going to cut off anyway. Save your spray for the stuff that needs it. Plus, this will go great for the chickens or for your compost pile. Just so I can keep these straight, I've labeled them. I've got soap, I've got TBG. <laughs> the Busy Gardener, and horticultural oil. And so I'm gonna label these so we can know which ones we sprayed, I would forget. The first one we're gonna try is this horticultural oil. And so you wanna make sure this is shaken up well. And aphids are usually gonna be found on the underside of the leaves. That's where it's a little more tender and that's where they can avoid that harsh sun and any type of predators. And so you wanna take and spray this all on the underside of the leaves. And that's gonna be true with all of these. So just gently, holding over the leaves. Ah, oh, I'm getting to feel their little aphid bodies all over my hand. It's obviously better to treat these before it turns into a giant colony like this. Ah, oh. ah, oh. look at my hands, gross. 
Normally what you'd do if you had an infestation like this would be to just take these really terrible leaves if they're full of aphids and remove those all together rather than trying to treat this leaf. This leaf isn't going to be contributing much to the, to the plant itself. It's got some dieback and you want to just then focus on the strong leaves treating those. But in this video I want to be able to see how effective these are so I'm keeping these leaves on. I'm just going to spray them and see how this does. Now it's been sprayed. Let's come back in a couple of days and see which one worked best. Now for today's sponsor, Revolution Race. Revolution Race is a Swedish designed clothing company and they make adventure wear. And adventure wear like this has its place in the orchard or garden. I actually love working in this stuff and I'll tell you why. This is the GP Pro Jacket by Revolution Race that I'm wearing here is fantastic and alleviates a bunch of those things that can be annoying when you're gardening. It is windproof. It's waterproof, it's breathable, and it's also got this amazing material that's really tough so you're not gonna get scratched, especially as you're pruning. You ever had a branch come on and scratch your arm? This will prevent you from getting scraped up by that sort of stuff. And let's talk about these GP Pro pants. This is probably my favorite piece of clothing from Revolution Race so functional in the garden and I'll tell you why. It's got a hybrid where it's got a bunch of reinforcement in the areas where it matters, on the thigh, on the knee, on the back of the calf, but then it also has a really bendable, stretchy, breathable material on the backs. If you're needing some more mobility, it's got these vents that open up that allow some more airflow and give you a little bit more range of motion if you're needing it. Probably my favorite thing about these pants is the fact that it has a pocket for an optional knee pad. These knee pads are amazing. You know how it feels to be out there gardening and getting poked and prodded in the knees and you just don't even wanna be out there after a little while because it's so uncomfortable. These knee pads let me stay out in the garden and in the orchard for longer than I otherwise would. Revolution Race is offering Busy Gardener viewers a 15% discount from October 28th through November 1st if you type in the code 15BUSYGARDEN or if you just click the link below, that should apply that for you. All right, let's see how many aphids we got. Okay, it's been a couple of days and I am so curious to see if in a couple of days this oil has worked, this soap has worked, and the homemade brew has worked. So let's check it out. This is first looking at the horticultural oil. And as I look under the leaves here, I still see a bunch of aphids over there. Did they get emboldened? I almost wonder if these guys are dead and just hanging on. I will say this though, they're not really moving, so they might just be the corpses of these things. Yeah, you know what? As I touch the leaves, I don't see any kind of movement from these things. Usually, if you disturb them, you'll see some sort of motion. But these are totally sitting still. No way, this is doing it? Okay, well that's great news. Again, a horticultural oil is targeting both the live insects as well as their eggs, and that's gonna prevent any subsequent infestation. I've got a couple of flower buds here and I wanna see those happen. Let me see inside. These little gnarled leaves are where there's usually so much aphid action going on. No, I don't see any movement in here. I just see, there's a ton of material. There are a ton of aphid bodies, but nothing is moving. Nothing is, I think that may have done it. Okay, very excited about that horticultural oil. Let's check the soap. The soap is the one that I had the highest hopes for because it actively goes in and disrupts those little bug bodies and should do, do something to them. So, and these, Pumpkin leaves are pretty thorny. Wow, I don't even really even see any aphids on this one. Let's see under here, this one has a lot more stuff going on. It looks like these are dead too. <gasps> it's working. I'm trying to find one that's again, real gnarled and full of aphids. The more tender the leaves is like a little bug buffet. And so that's where I wanna test this and take a look and see what's going on on these tender leaves like these near these buds over here. All right, this will be the telltale. This is loaded with stuff now. Are they alive or are they dead? It seems like they're dead. I mean, again, the aphid bodies are on there. I wonder if spraying them off in this case, lightly with just you know a spray bottle makes sense to just get those off or uh, like a light hose, just to knock those bodies off and see if anything reemerges because they're all just standing there like this. Those two worked really, really well from all signs that I can see here. There's no movement, just a bunch of bodies laying there on both the soap and the oil. Let's take a look at the Busy Gardener brew. It's, it wasn't my brew, I just followed the instructions. So if it didn't, it, what I'm saying is, if it didn't work, it's not my fault. Bob Villa. Maybe you'd like to handle this one, Bob. 
we'll see how close you were on this. Okay, this is our soap and water and cayenne pepper brew. And this is the one, this plant was the one that got wiped out the most when the aphids first came. They landed on here and then they moved their way down. And so this one has gotten so beat up. Look how just ragged it is. The tender leaves still have a bunch of aphids on there. Although they don't seem like they're, ow, that's a pokey leaf. The stem has a bunch of these little thorns on it, these little spines, and they just hurt. There are definitely some aphids still on here. They don't look as dead. The home brew, I don't think is doing it as well. Yeah, there's still ants on here, and the ants are, the ants are here running around. I don't think they're collecting the bodies. I think they're still tending to those aphids and that sticky juice that they dump out. So I don't think that this home brew worked that great. I would say ideally you wouldn't be using any kind of spray on your veggies. What you'd be doing is fostering an environment where natural predators, praying mantis and lace wings and ladybugs are all coming and setting up shop and eating all the pests. But that hasn't happened here. I saw two or three ladybugs. It just wasn't enough for the crazy infestation that we had in this case. Now, I hope they sent the memo back to their friends and said, hey, there's this is a place that's got some bug action going on. So hopefully they come and do that. But uh, in this case, we did spray, we had some results, and I was happy about that. All right, so where did we end up on this? Our homemade brew, this insecticidal soap, or this horticultural oil? All three of these things are supposed to have some sort of benefit and efficacy. What I found was that the insecticidal soap and the oil did seem to have some sort of marked difference, pretty evenly actually in our case, whereas the homemade didn't seem to be as effective. I still saw a bunch of ants. I didn't see any ants on the other plants, but I did on the one where we use the homemade method. So look, this stuff is inexpensive. The oil is like 10 bucks or something like that for a concentrate, so you're gonna get many spray bottles full. And the soap, I don't know, this was like five or six bucks. So you're still paying for some of the soap and some of the cayenne pepper, not much that would go into the homemade method, but look, there's nothing worse than coming out and seeing your hard fought fruits and vegetables wiped out by some sort of insect like aphids. And so for me, I think spending a couple of bucks, literally a couple of bucks more for more effective methods makes a lot of sense. Thankfully, all three of these methods are really gentle on the plants and they also are not dangerous for humans, you're able to take and wash that stuff off very easily off your fruits and vegetables. And so if it were me, I would go with either the insecticidal soap or horticultural oil. You may want to also look at neem oil, but again, that can sometimes be a little bit harder on your plants. So if you want to go the safe route, an all season horticultural oil is a good option for you. I'll link to both of these in the description below. Well, I appreciate you tuning into this episode of the Busy Gardener channel where we looked at these aphids. Hopefully this has given you some sort of guidance on which ones to buy and try in your orchard or garden. I wanna thank those who are members of the Busy Gardener channel, like Captain Leo, for example. You're a Garden Boss member. Appreciate that. Thank you for being part of this community. Helps energize me to do what we're doing knowing that you guys are on board. So if you haven't yet become a member, take a look at the description. Take a look at that link, that join link below. Wait, whether you've got one aphid to kill in your orchard garden or 20,000, till next time, stay busy.